Well, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> um, welcome to our COVID-19 uh, information series that we're launching this week. Um, my name is Carrie Mahoney, and I am with the Ark of Massachusetts. So uh, today, what I hope to provide for you is some information on, um, you know, solving some problems out there, because I know there is a whole host of problems going on, um, where to find support information and resources. So before we get going, I just wanted to welcome all of you and um, just give you a little tip. If you have any technical difficulty, the best thing to do is to log off and log back on. That usually takes care of anything. Um, thank you for muting yourselves. Um, we do record our sessions, so it always makes for a better sound quality. So I am also going to um, have you you can chat in your questions to me. I'll make sure I address them all. Um, if they are more of an individual question about a particular situation, please email me. <clears throat> I'm uh, My email at the ARC is Mahoney, M-A-H-O-N-E-Y, at arcmass.org, and I'll be happy to uh, schedule a phone consultation um, to help you out. Um, so I'd love to find out more about who's in the audience. I do know Several of you recognize some names there. So can you chat in to me if you are a parent? Or, or a family member. We'll just say parents, family members, caregivers. Okay, thanks, Amy. Amy's a parent. Anybody else? And also, this is a good way to check in um, with, to make sure you have um, good sound quality and you can see my screen okay. Um, so we have a, a parent, in, uh, Beth is a parent and a professional, um, a day have nurse, which is awesome. Uh, we have another professional on. Anybody else want to chat in? All righty. Okay. So, um, and oh, a transition professional. Awesome. Another professional. Okay. Paul's a professional. So we've got a, a mix of audience, and I'm hoping that uh, the information I can provide for you today will reach all of you and be able to get your, um, you know, the information that you need. So hold on, and we'll go to the next slide. For some reason, my slide is not moving. There we go. Okay, so I, I don't know if any of you have been on our uh, ARC website lately. Um, we have up on one of the tabs of the COVID-19 um, update uh, page, which will bring you to a whole set of resources and that sort of thing. Um, when um, you know, when you need information, we that uh, pages are typically updated daily because things are just um, happening so fast around here. But what we started out with is we really wanted people to fill out our survey. We have a survey up on our website. And um, so far, we have over 271 responses um, for the survey. Pretty much, we're asking, do you have a child or a loved one under 22 or over? We're about 50-50 right now with our responses. Um, I'm happy to say, too, that we also have this survey translated into Russian, Vietnamese, Chinese, and Spanish. So if you, um, uh, you know, work with families from a diverse cultures or are from a diverse culture, um, please click on the, the links and they'll, you'll be able to um, see the survey in your language. Um, you'll note that, too, on our website, there on the bottom left-hand side is a translate button. And if you press that, uh, anything on our website that's not a link. Um, can be translated into several different languages. So that it's it's we use Google Translate. So hopefully, that that is something that we um, that is helpful for all of you. So um, we asked 
if people have their care in place? And over half said yes. Um, and then we asked, what are your issues? I mean, what are your concerns right now? Well, not having structure, you know, the, the school programs are all closed. The day programs are all closed. People are home. Um, behavioral challenges. Um, it's a big transition for people to all of a sudden have their, as you know, have, you know, your life uh, be put on hold. Um, gets uh, And some of the kids, too, and the adults that are used to a routine and a structure, that can also be concerning. Um, having no school or day, or day services is, is a hard situation for everyone. Um, also, in-home behavioral support. Um, there's not some people are continuing, some people aren't, and quite frankly, some families don't want um, people coming into their homes right now. So how do you uh, maintain, um, you know, a, a good environment in your home? And also a big concern is uh, available medical supplies. So those were the concerns of the day. Um, then we also asked about what are your concerns for the future? And the number one concern was the caregiver's health. You know, what, you know if um, you contract the virus, um, what is the impact? Um, if you're a single parent, um, if you're an older caretaker, um, you know, what, what impact is it giving you um, on your loved ones as well? And then also the financial impact. You know, many have lost their jobs. Many have uh, had to take leaves of absence from their jobs um, because um, you have to stay home and start caring for your loved ones now. And also a, not, a big regression of skills and behavior people are really, really concerned about without getting all this, um, all this good information. So um, one of the reasons why it prompted us to offer these kind of quick check-ins is although, I mean, I think the internet and email and listservs, I, you know, we're, I, I kind of think that we're flooding um, information. Most, um, half the people um, that responded to our survey, survey felt that they weren't getting enough information from their service providers and their, um, so, and programs and that sort of thing. So we hope to be able to uh, kind of help you with that today. And so what's next? Uh, what do we plan to do with the survey? We're going to be keeping it open for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we want to get a little bit more um, impact from the uh, diverse communities. And we're going to be developing um, the ARC action plan on how we will address these concerns. So um, we'll, you know, uh, we'll be providing information whenever we can. Um, so getting help, where, where can you get help? Well, you know, I, I talked about the, the ARC website. Um, there's a link on your slide. Um, we update uh, pretty much daily uh, because things change daily in this whole um, crisis that we're under. Um, it includes federal updates, um, lots going on in um, Washington. Um, the stimulus package is coming out. Um, you know, people are going to be getting checks in the mail. Um, finding local resources, you know, are they pri private? Are they public? Special education, a lot happening there. They are um, the commissioner for uh, Department of Early and Secondary Education um, has, um, you know, let the districts know that they will be providing online uh, learning for all students, just not um, kids who are in typical classrooms, but special education as well. And I mean, uh, the, you know, Desi is really trying to figure that out right now. Um, so, uh, but it will be happening in early April. So also some general information and links, uh, state updates, resources, uh, DDS, uh, Mass Health, uh, getting information there, um, addressing urgent needs. Um, do you need food? Are you having a hard time paying your rent? Um, all of these things that are very real for people. Um, insurance and financial resources. And then also we have a special link for providers because they're going through quite the changes as well. Okay, so in terms of locating resources, I mean, really, whoop, sorry, need to go back, um, is, is going to the agency that supports you 
first. So if you are, um, if, you know, your loved one's at home, you may be getting several supports. Um, you might be getting a family support center reaching out to you. I, I, I know that several are reaching out to the families that they're um, associated with in their centers um, every week. Um, some of the day programs I know are um, beginning to uh, develop how they can do things a little bit virtually. Um, and so, you know, they would be a great first uh, connection to if you have some questions, you know, are you, how do you structure your, your loved one's day? Um, what are the things that they find really helpful? And what do they enjoy doing on a daily basis so that, that you know, perhaps you can put some of these strategies into your home. Um, your local family support centers and autism support centers, when you live at home, definitely uh, a great resource. Um, you can click on that directory to find one in your area. Don't worry if you are not um, formally associated. I would just give the family support centers a call or the autism support centers. They're fabulous with information and resources. And where I'm giving you kind of a general overview today, they know specifics um, for your cities and towns. Um, if your loved one's living independently and gets some in-home type of support, give that agency a call. Um, are they stepping up the pace? I mean, how are they handling this all? Um, what kind of um, you know, services are they continuing to provide? Is there something that you feel your loved ones need that they aren't providing? You know, ar articulate that. I mean, people really want to work and support people. Um, and it, we, we're all in this together. So you can also feel free to contact a chapter of the of the ARC in your area. Um, many of our affiliates across uh, Massachusetts our service providers, um, some provide family support centers, autism support centers, residential programs, uh, day programs, uh, day hubs, that sort of thing. And then finally, you know, look at your connecting with your DDS area office, your service, your uh, loved one service coordinators. You know, have they been in touch with you? Uh, feel free to get in touch with them. Most people are working remotely. Um, so, uh, but, you know, these days, thank goodness, because of things like Zoom and um, internet and that sort of thing, we can um, connect with people and still do our jobs, even though um, we may be at home. So finally, if you're not DDS eligible, what I also encourage you to do is to contact your independent living center. Um, there's independent living centers all over the state. If you connect on that link on your, on your screen, you will um, be connected find the uh, independent living center closest to you. Um, independent living centers, if you're not familiar with them, um, they are centers um, that provide information, support, and resources for individuals who have a disability, but, um, and sometimes they also serve people with intellectual or uh, developmental disabilities and autism, but for they've been historically um, available for individuals who have disabilities but don't have intellectual disabilities. So I encourage you to reach out. Um, they, they're a wealth of information. So those are some of the resources that I wanted to tell you about today. Um, I do, I'm going to go into the chat pane because we've got a couple of um, Okay, so Vicki Vicky Allen um, said for providers, um, the House of Possibilities in Easton had a great webinar about going virtual. It should be available on their website. All right, thank you. Thanks, Vicki. Um, the other things to think about and is, you know, we're also looking at your communities. Um, I just know that there are several wonderful possibilities from individual communities. Um, I learned about uh, the town of Salem, for instance. Um, there's um, these pop-up type of, um, uh, you know, um, farmer's markets going on. So people have a, a more open air um, ability to shop for fresh fruits and vegetables and that sort of thing. A lot of times, some of our um, elder services 
will actually uh, do shopping for you. Uh, I know some of the family support centers are also shopping uh, for people. Um, and or getting home delivery um, is a, just another way of thinking about it. Um, and um, also just, um, you know, home health aides are, if you, if you get PCA services and you're not finding PCAs to come into your home, uh, Mass Health has just, uh, you know, announced about a week and a half ago that, that you can actually get home health aid services. Um, so they may be a little bit more plentiful. They would be strangers to your loved ones, but, you know, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's up to every family to kind of figure out what's, what they can, um, you know, what they're comfortable with. So um, Robin asks that we share more information on lifelines or medical alert bracelets. And, um, you know, a wonderful resource to go to is your community elder services um, agency. Every uh, agency has one um, there that they will certainly recommend uh, that to people. Also, the local hospital or your local uh, physician um, would also be able to provide that information. I think um, there's a, actually, Robin, I, I emailed you yesterday with a specific one, and um, I can't remember the name of it right now, though, so I'd share it with everyone. So I'll have to look at that. Um, the other thing is, um, I wanted to mention was just um, looking at you know services like Meals on Wheels. If you if you do if you're an older caregiver or your loved one's older, they can start getting um, qualifying for some of these uh, services. So check out the elder services. That that's a really um, great resource. Um, I did get a question yesterday from Diane who I wasn't sure which or not she could be on this call today. And um, she's having her sister live with her right now. And um, she lives in a condo, doesn't have a backyard, um, and just was looking for some um, just support or, or guidance about, um, you know, whether, uh, what kind of exercise can she do? Now, I know a lot of service providers are offering virtual exercise programs. So, um, you know, she didn't feel that that was gonna be a um, good match for her sister to do things virtually. So um, just, you know, getting out in the car, going to the park, um, you know, being able to get out of the house, uh, you know, having a rec regular routine, I think is probably the key aspect in terms of how do you build in exercise. Um, she also thought about just uh, climbing the stairs in her apartment up and down a few times, which I think was a great idea, but um, just wondering if, if anybody else has had this and what they're doing. And feel free to unmute yourself if you want to answer that question. Um, the, you know, if your loved one does like virtual and can do that sort of thing, um, I know the Special Olympics of Massachusetts has some wonderful exercise, group exercise uh, programs. I took a look at them the other day, and it's really nice because it's people with disabilities and uh, people without disabilities providing these um, programs for you. Um, there's also, I know Bridgewell and Riverside Community Care are offering um, family Zumba uh, for, for the ones who love to, to dance um, and exercise at the same time. Um, there's another exercise class. Some of them are uh, offering yoga online um, and definitely would, would look into those sort of things. Um, the YS Carrie, this is Herb. The, Hi. Uh, the gym that uh, my son goes to uh, is doing some online classes uh, as well. Uh, we've got uh, some of the uh, folks that service him uh, in the community as well uh, are doing some online things with him. So he's, uh, and we're already kind of hooking that portion, of, portion in. Awesome. That's great. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, it's a lot to put together, but I think, you know, the more, uh, you know, you can build that kind of routine and connection, um, the better you can, the, you know, the better it is. You know, some folks aren't into virtual. Um, I mean, it makes it a little bit harder, but um, also another uh, fitness and exercise resources I, I uh, was checking out was the Y's, Y. MCAs, YWCAs, um, they have um, virtual classes as well for all different levels of ability. So hopefully that, so, that's helpful. Carrie, this is Diane. Hello. Hey, Diane. Yeah. Hi. Um, well, <laughs> Uh, for her, and I'm just wondering, are people, you know, is it still okay to get on? I don't think in parks is any good anymore keeping their distance, but I just don't know what the group homes are doing, and I really want to be consistent. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think, you know, everybody is uh, following the different types of um, messaging out there that, you know, larger groups should not be going out together, um, practicing good hand washing, sanitizing, a must. Um, just, you know, looking at the person in terms of are they able to uh, distance themselves with e from each other? Are they um, able to, you know, understand the whole risk of going out in the community and what that means? So I think it's it's very very um, individualized for people, but certainly getting out and getting so, a walk in every day, um, and and you know being able to enjoy that fresh air and get out of the house. I think most people are doing, but in very very small groups. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, all righty. So uh, Paul from uh, for the Bridgewell Family Support Center virtual class, email him. And he put his email on the uh, chat box, pdolan at bridgewell.org. Paul, do you want to talk a little bit more about what else uh, Bridgewell's doing as well as uh, Riverside Community Care? Would you like to unmute yourself? Maybe I can unmute you for you. Oh, you, you don't have a mic. Okay, all right. So Paul doesn't have a mic up. But I know that they're doing some really great stuff. Um, you know, uh, Judy Doherty, um, it, 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 you, you probably work with J Judy Paul. Um, she has um, put out a schedule um, for uh, people to look at of all the different classes and that sort of thing. So again, I think it's really important that you connect with your um, family support centers if you've got loved ones at homes or your um, oh Judy's your supervisor. Okay, so if you connect with uh, Paul, you'll be able to connect and get that schedule. Um, Diane was um, asking exercise art classes and offerings for caregivers from Bridgewell are awesome. Thank you, Bridgewell. <laughs> That's yeah, it, it's really great. And I know other family support centers are doing things. Um, the uh, lifelinks class up in the Lowell area is providing um, a um, weekly music therapy um, as well as uh, art class. And, um, you know, I know I've seen things from Thrive. They're doing some things, um, you know, having a virtual guys uh, connection night, um, you know, instead of the uh, social groups that they used to do. And they have, uh, I believe, family dance. A lot of people are doing uh, dancing uh, to get the energy out. So um, those are all terrific ideas. Um, I'd love to hear if anybody wants to share uh, a silver lining or um, that they've discovered during this, this crisis or something that has worked for them and um, could be suggested for other people. Anybody want to share? Hi, Carrie. It's Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, my brother lives alone and... Um, 
during this time, we started having meals delivered by a company called Freshly. And they're- Oh, yeah. And um, you can order anywhere from three to 12 meals. And they're, they're, they just need to be reheated. And um, we found that he was going to restaurants and using takeout, which was expensive, but also not social distancing. So we're trying this. This is our first week, but wanted to offer that as an opportunity and as an option for folks. That's a great idea. Yes, yes. I've heard of a couple of people are doing that. Also, I'm um, using the um, uh, delivery of, of food versus going to the grocery stores. Um, you know, uh, obviously Amazon, uh, the Whole Foods does that through Amazon Prime. Um, I know uh, Shaw's uses Instacart. Um, I was in, you know, just uh, the grocery store the other day and um, in the plaza. People are also, um, there's a company in my community that is, uh, will come pick up your laundry, do your laundry and bring it back. So, yeah, these things aren't cheap, um, but it is an alternative. And so, um, you know, these are uh, resources that some can use. But how about anybody else? Anybody else have something that they'd like to share that's really worked well? I'm seeing that too. There's a couple of people who do have their um, their loved ones at home, um, and not at home, excuse me, in their residential uh, placements. And um, that's hard because uh, they can't leave. <laughs> um, and so if they do go to visit but for the most part, if you if you're going to visit a family, uh, they can't return back to the residential placement. So I'm wondering if anybody has any words of advice uh, to how to handle that that stressful time where you're not able to see your loved one. Randy, can I unmute you? <laughs> Would you share? Hey, Randy. Okay, she might not be able to do that right now. Um, also, I see Margaret Van Gelder is on the line. Margaret, would you feel okay if I unmuted you and you could share a little bit about DDS and um, where, you know, people, what kind of support they're providing for uh, people during this time? Sure, Carrie, but I, I think you did a nice job capturing um, some of the services and I think really creative opportunities that a lot of our family support centers and autism support centers and other programs um, have been engaged in. So, as you said, I think there's um, a lot of really proactive um, efforts to try to connect the families to try to offer some different programming that people can participate in from afar both for you know, enjoyment and to engage folks, but also to offer support both to individuals and their caregivers. Um, we have worked to sort of expand the ways we can offer flexible funding to families. So we recognize that there's greater kind of um, sort of basic needs that many families um, may be experiencing right now around access to food or paying bills. Um, so have expanded and provided some more flexibility around use of gift cards and home delivery. So some of the options that you are describing are certainly ways our centers can help support um, families during this time. Um, and also to sort of help in some situations to access technology, um, because that's something we've all become much more reliant on. And, you know, that can also vary in terms of what's going to work for each person. But if that's needed or to help offer other kinds of, you know, materials, supplies, resources that will, um, you know, facilitate, you know, kind of pursuing other activities. Similarly, we're doing things in, um, you know, our other programs, the DESC program, if anyone's participating in that, our autism waiver program, really trying to expand some of that flexibility. Our area offices, as you said, are, well, everyone's working remotely, but service coordinators, have been also reaching out to families, um, are trying to problem solve, troubleshoot, offer other resources and services. So people should certainly um, be encouraged to reach out to their area office if they have questions or 
needs. Um, I know that within some of the residential, you know, group home programs that they're really trying to support um, more access, like what, you know, to technology, both for engagement of individuals, but to help facilitate communication, um, you know, between parents and caregivers and um, individuals living in the residences. And there is going to be more guidance coming out soon about, you know, um, some of our community-based day support providers or employment service providers continuing to offer some type of virtual or remote services and supports to individuals, you know, who are able to benefit from that during this period. Um, so a lot continues to evolve. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions or if you can think of something, Terry, to um, raise, feel free. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, um, I was curious about um, people who live alone, um, mm -hmm. individual adults who live alone, and are, is there any flexibility in terms of, um, you know, receiving possibly more support hours uh, during these, this time, because possibly they lost their job, uh, or they're, you know, and I just, probably the best thing to do is talk with their service coordinator, correct? I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I know individual supports are continuing to be offered in different ways. You know, some people might still be providing that, you know, directly in the home if that's in the best interest of the person and um, the agency providing those supports, but they also can be offered, you know, remotely or in other ways. So, I think you're right. I think, you know, with changing circumstances, that, you know, it's best um, to sort of have those conversations with the area offices. I, think there's a lot of, you know, willingness and interest to look at how we can be, you know, flexible and be most responsive to sort of people's changing needs. Okay. Well, thank you, Margaret. I appreciate sure. you jumping in. Um, so <clears throat> I'm looking at the time and it's 1130 and just wanted to check in to see if there's any more questions. Again, you know, that um, we um, are here for you, uh, the ARC, the affiliates, DDS, uh, Mass Health, and people, you know, the schools, all trying to work things out. Um, the amount of information that's coming out is just amazing. So um, I want to let you know we'll be in touch and we'll, you know, try to open up good communication. I wish you all well, stay healthy, and, um, you know, let us know if there's something that you need. All right. Everyone take care. Thank you.